for most people, as soon as you're done with high school or maybe like those few junior college courses, you do not want to ever touch a history book again. You're done with history. But that makes me so sad because I love history so much and I know that there are so many amazing books out there that really, I'll just be honest, they make you a better person. I think that knowing more about history makes you a better person. So. I am going to try and convince you that there are a few books out there that you actually would like, that you would find interesting and enjoyable to read. So I'm going to share with you just five that I think anybody would like. You don't have to be a history major, you don't have to be a historian. These ones are just interesting to anybody. So the first one, got my little stack over here. Okay, I know it's long, it looks really long, and some people would just be like, and eh, no, I'm not going to read that one, but give it a chance. It's called 1491, New Revelations of the Americas Before Columbus by Charles C. Mann. So we all know what happened in 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue, but we don't know as much about what the people that Columbus encountered were like before he encountered them. There's not as many written records, and so we just kind of go off of what happened after Columbus invaded <laughs> the Americas. So. I know it's long, but there's a lot to say. So when we were in school, we learned a lot about the ancient cultures of like Rome and Greece and maybe even like ancient China or ancient Japan, but I don't remember ever learning anything about ancient Latin America um, when I was in middle school or high school. So this tells the stories of the ancient Incas, um, some of the Native American tribes in North America, a lot of these very, very old tribes in South America, kind of questions the idea that, you know, people just walked across the Bering Strait when it was frozen thousands of years ago. Um, it talks about how Americans, I'm going to say Americans, but like Native Americans, Indians, did interact with the land. They weren't always just totally at harmony you know, with everything around them and never like ruined anything. They had crops, they had cities, they had aqueducts, they had bridges, all kinds of things. They interacted with nature in the same way that every other civilization did. So I think this answers a lot of questions that people may have about what was this whole nation and this whole continent, these two continents that we live in, what were they like before Europeans got there? I think that's a really, really important question to ask. And I have to admit that this kind of raises maybe more questions than it answers, but it's really, really interesting. Um, it's written in a way that makes you want to keep reading. This could take you a year to get through. I'm not going to lie. It could take a really long time. I had to read it in a week. But if you just kind of slowly went through this, I think that you would um, just kind of absorb the information as you go, and you would just understand a lot more about the history of the Americas before European settlement, invasion, whatever you want to call it. Um, highly recommend it. This is like at Barnes & Noble. You can find it almost anywhere. The next one is another history of the Americas, but more of the United States. So this one, I've got my little tabs in it, sorry, is A Different Mirror, A History of Multicultural America by Ronald Takaki. And this one is by an ethnic studies professor. And again, it's really thick, I know, but you know what? If nobody is holding you to a deadline, just take take a year, take two years to read through this. It's fine. Um, this tells kind of the the regular story that you hear about the United States. It talks about you know World War One, World War Two, westward expansion, Vietnam War, um, the gold rush, slavery, all these different kind of big events that we usually learn about in American history, but it tells them from more perspectives than just white males. Um, a lot of people don't know about the Navajo Code talkers that contributed invaluably to the World War II effort on the side of the Americans, or even the Japanese Americans that fought in World War II. Um, this brings in the stories of African Americans, Jewish Americans, Irish Americans, Asian Americans, Latino Americans, and just gives you a more well-rounded view of American history. And this is truly a book where I think you're a better person after you read it. You're a better American. You understand a lot more about the history of different cultures in our country. It has a few pictures. Yeah, not very many. It is long, I know, but this one is fabulous. I, I use little bits and pieces of it um, in my teaching just to kind of break it down for students. But as an adult, um, I think this is 
the language is readable, it's written in an enjoyable way, and I love it. This is just one of my favorite books ever, actually. Um, okay, this one is great. You might have heard of this one already. Sorry, I have this huge, like, used sticker on here. But The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks by Rebecca Skloot. So Henrietta Lacks lived in the 50s. She was like a mom in the 50s. And she was black. She lived in the South. She worked on a tobacco farm. And she got sick and she went to the doctor and they took some of her cells. She actually had cancer. And she, she did not survive. Um, she died a few years later. But these cells, they're called HeLa cells because Henrietta Lacks, so HeLa. Um, everybody in like the biology world knows about HeLa cells because they've been replicating ever since 1951. These are her cells. People sell these cells, make money off of these cells. Um, people have made scientific breakthroughs and um, pharmaceutical breakthroughs off of these cells. Yet her descendants don't have health insurance and have not ever taken biology classes in college because they don't have those opportunities. So um, this journalist found this woman's family and kind of dug around and tried to research what happened. Like, how did these doctors get these cells? And what are the ethics behind this? If you take a piece of someone's body, can you own that? Or, you know, should her family have some kind of entitlement to all the money that people have made off of their mom's cells? Or, you know, why are they living in poverty when their mother's cells have contributed to scientific breakthroughs? It's really interesting. I mean, um, it, it just goes in a lot of different direc directions. So the history of medicine, the history of science, the history of race, the history of kind of equality for resources. I read this in like two sittings, I think. It's, it's also pretty long. I mean, it's 300, about 300 pages, but it's fascinating. I really think that you could get through this and not even realize that you were like learning. It does, it's not, bad tasting medicine. This is like, you know, spoonful of sugar type of history. And I really, really like this book. Let's see. This one I just read recently and it is a doozy. It is really, really long. But again, this is one that you could take a really long time to read. You could take a year, two years. You could just read bits and pieces and still get a lot out of this book. It's called Rising Tide, The Great Mississippi Flood of 1927 and How It Changed America by John M. Barry. Even difficult to summarize what this book is about because it's about the history of engineering, which might be interesting to some people. It's about the history of kind of man's desire to master nature, you know, and try and control the Mississippi River and use it for trade, to use it um, for farming, to use it for shipment. Um, it's about the history of like these southern planters who, you know, during the Civil War or before the Civil War, owned plantations and owned people. So now, after slavery is abolished and they still need laborers, what do they do? Uh, it's about the history of New Orleans and kind of New Orleans culture. The, there's a chapter in here that's actually the best history I've ever read on the KKK. Um, it's horrifying, but really interesting. Um, the end is more of a history of like President Hoover and how he became president. There's just so much in this book, you would be shocked. And the writer, John M. Barry, he's really good. Like I, sometimes I forget that you can write history in like beautiful words, <laughs> you know, like he really keeps you reading. Um, I tend to skim a lot of the books that I read because I have so much to read through. I couldn't skim this because I wanted to know every single detail. Um, a lot of the details are horrific and violent and awful, but it's amazing. And I think that this book has kind of bigger implications in the real world today. Um, how do we treat nature? How do we treat people who are poor? How do we treat different races? Um, how do politicians handle floods, uh, Hurricane Katrina? You know, so I think this one, even if it takes you a long time to get through, it's worth the read. And the last book that I have is really different. I just wanted to bring in something that maybe you didn't even realize was out there. Um, this book is called Abina and the Important Men, and it's a graphic history. So it's a graphic novel at the beginning. So. It tells the history of this girl in a graphic novel format. So if you have maybe kids that are interested in graphic novels or maybe you just like them, this is really cool. You can tell history 
through graphic novels. So she is enslaved by people who live near her. Like her family basically sells her to them so that she can get more food and she can have a better life and have better shelter. Um, but then she is sold to somebody else and it's not really legal. But this is supposed to be during the time when um, the British kind of controlled the Gold Coast of Africa. And so this is a true story. This is based on actual documents. And then um, the second half of the book kind of explains more about the sources where they found out about this, this woman who was real named Abina. And she took her captors to court and, and fought for her freedom. And so this is a really interesting look at women, at African history, at the history of slavery, and you know, there are a lot of different versions of slavery. And, and then, you know, just the fact that it's a, a graphic history, I think is really interesting. There's a few other books um, out that are graphic histories that I've been trying to collect for my history classes, actually. So this one is just cool. Like, if, if you like this type of a thing, you can get this on Amazon. Um, and yeah, I really like it. I just think this is really different and can get people interested in history. So those are my five suggestions. Um, even if you think that you don't like history, even if you hated it in high school or maybe even in college, give it a shot when you don't have a test to take or when you don't have a deadline for the books that you have to read. Um, just try it on your own time and see if you enjoy just learning for the sake of learning and learning just to be a better citizen and a better human because I think that's why history is important. So if you have any other books that you think are, you know, kind of universally appealing that a lot of people would like and maybe I haven't read it, I would love to hear about it. What are your favorite history books? Here are some of mine. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.